The committee to erect a statue in honor of native son Rooster B. Hayes was formed in 2016. Uh, it was the brainchild of Gene Buckingham uh, and a group of small group of uh, friends. Uh, they went to the city of Delaware and the city was very supportive of the project and said, Gene, form a committee and uh, let's get this done. Rutherford B. Hayes is the subject, am I correct? As I remember him, he was a good friend of mine. Oh no, never mind, that's wrong. He was not a good friend of mine, but I do remember hearing a lot about him. And, uh, you know, being born here in Delaware, and October 4th, 1822 was that date. And his parents moved here from Vermont. His father died just a couple months, two or three months before he died, before he was born. And uh, his mother, raised the children then and but then her brother came to Delaware Sardis to help he was not married and he came here and helped raise the kids for about the first five years anyway until he was about five and then moved on farther north to Fremont Ohio but President Hayes remained here in this town until he was about 14 years of age he attended a private school for the first two years of his life. You know, I've heard that when he went to that school that his mother was having trouble convincing him to go to that school, that he was a shy little boy. and He didn't want to go to this school. After all, he'd have to go all the way to that school. Well, by the way, it was only just across the street. In his third grade year, they had opened what they called a common school, which was the first term that they were using for public schools. Today, that's where a building, a white building on the corner of Winter and Franklin stands. And that would be the Andrews House today. But the other building before the Andrews House was a small stone structure, a one-room building that was the one root public school. Sardis uh, thought that he uh, should go to college out east. Uh, but, you know, in fact, Hayes, I think at that time, was just 15 and a half years old when he decided that he was ready for college. People sometimes ask, well, why didn't he go to Ohio Westland? He was from Delaware. There was no Ohio Westland yet. He went to Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio, and he graduated, I believe it was the year that Ohio Westland opened as a university. He ended up graduating at, from Harvard, getting his, uh, his graduate degree or law degree there. He ended up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, became an attorney there in Cincinnati. Meeting his wife, Lucy, Lucy came to Delaware. Uh, she was a, younger than Hayes was, than Rutherford Hayes, but she came here to Delaware from Chillicothe, Ohio. Uh, Hayes had had some different girlfriends over a period of time, and uh, they say he was a pretty handsome man for that for the time period. And that uh, that, uh, but he was he was not one to get too seriously involved with anyone. At one point, the future president was back visiting and he was walking down there through the campus. He spotted Lucy and uh, he was impressed by her by the first time he met her, first time he saw her. Getting into his career then, you know, uh, he was an attorney, but he broke out of uh, that for a period of time because Although he had, uh, he was doing well, but the Civil War comes along. When the war broke out, uh, he was 
uh, married. He had three children. He was almost 40 years of age. Uh, he volunteered, the 23rd Ohio Volunteer Infantry, and off he went to the war. He was uh, named by the governor to be a uh, to lead a troop, lead troops. Uh, he was a major when he got out. He was a two-star general, a major general, uh, due to his leadership skills in the field. He led his men by example, not by his word. He was the only president of the United States to ever be shot in a war. He was not just shot once, he was shot five times, five different times. That means he was at the front, he was at the lead, not standing back, uh, watching his men go. Although he entered the war immediately, he, uh, he, by the way, before the war, had been representing in court runaway slaves. A uh, quite famous case of that, in fact, representing a woman, and then once uh, it was a successful uh, uh, court case for her, and so others heard about it, and then he was representing other runaway slaves uh, in court. Of course, when he went into the Civil War, he was fighting for the North. Although he was under General Rosecrans, there was a General McClellan who was for the North. and. It, he was bemoaning the fact that McClellan was too slow. He thought he wasn't pursuing the Southern Army after, uh, after battles. He attributed some of that in his diary, because he kept a diary his whole life, from college to the end of his life. And in his diary, he said something to the effect of, uh, I think that the reason he's so slow is that he really isn't against slavery as an institution. He doesn't think that it's necessary to do away with slavery. And he went on in his diary to make the comment uh, that he said that uh, slavery is, uh, is our biggest enemy for the Union. In other words, the country and the, and the Union Army. And then he quick, quickly added, in fact, he said, it's the only enemy that we have. During the war, they wanted him to run for Congress. He said, I will not leave, and, I, and if, I'm, if I do get elected, I won't serve. Not until this war is over. He had become very well respected among his troops. He was always right out there with them. And he said, I will not leave this war for any reason until it's finished. After that, he got elected three times as governor of Ohio. He really was big into education, and particularly vocational education. And he thought, we need more of that. And uh, they were trying to get a, a school going in Ohio that he thought needed to be in Columbus, Ohio. And he kept pushing it and pushing it. And finally, when he became governor, he pushed it, he said, there's going to be a university in Columbus, Ohio. He started Ohio State University. After he was governor, then he ended up running for president in that most contested of elections probably in the history of the country was the one where, of course, he wasn't the first or the last to be elected president without getting the popular vote. Um, then was the big contention and how the, the people beside, behind the scenes in Hayes' campaign kept working, trying to convince uh, the electors uh, who have to choose the president for them to switch and vote for him. He, he uh, voted for the amendment to give African-American males the right to vote, which really angered the South. They didn't want that to happen. And what's interesting is, in that contended election, it may not have been contended as much, and President Hayes himself may have won the election outright had African Americans been allowed to vote in the South. Because even though the amendment had passed, that doesn't mean that their states weren't going to figure out some way to make sure that African Americans did not vote in that election. And South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida 
uh, were ones where he might have won that whole election had the African Americans been allowed to vote in it because they would have certainly voted for Hayes. I mean, he had supported the amendments, he'd fought for the North, had taken a strong stand against slavery, and had even represented the runaway slaves before the election. He would have carried their vote had they been allowed to vote. But since they were not allowed to vote, even though supposedly they should have been allowed to vote because of the amendment, uh, Hayes didn't carry those states, and it became a contested election that Hayes agreed to withdraw the troops from the South that were still there during what they called Reconstruction. Others were saying, don't pull them out of the South, because if you do, then it's going to get worse, that their rights are not going to be protected. Uh, Hayes had elected in the end with those three states because he had, had said that that's what he would do. Uh, after the election was over, after he was chosen president, he did withdraw those troops from the South. And, you know, some contend that because of that, he set, he set the country back for decades as far as uh, blacks in the South having their their rights. Uh, of course, got a lot of presidents since then, and they could have made a lot of changes too that could have that could have helped. But uh, but anyway, uh, that was one thing that has been the most contented about President Hayes, what he did. Uh, after his presidency, he retired to Fremont, Ohio, uh, with his family, um, and that's where he spent his last ten years of his life but he remained very active. Uh, uh, prison reform, national prison reform was a passion of his. Education was second passion. Uh, his wife preceded him in death. Uh, he passed uh, after coming back from Ohio State University Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, he took ill uh, up in Cleveland on his way home and then he passed in Fremont in January of 1893. Yes, we have a high school in, in Delaware named after him. Yes, there's a government center named after him on North Industry. Yes, there are streets named after him here in Delaware. Yes, there's a uh, uh, Hayes Colony housing development. I'm sure it's named after the president, but um, except for the 17 East William Street um, Daughters of the American Revolution Memorial and the plaque in the ground at where William Street Methodist Church stands today, uh, we felt that the committee felt that something needed to be done and the community uh, has responded in in such a positive manner, saying this is long overdue. Obviously, we were able to uh, unveil the statue on October 4th, 2019, uh, a little after, a little more than three years after uh, forming as a committee. Uh, well received by the community. We set up a nonprofit. Uh, we we're a nonprofit group, uh, and our funds all went through the Delaware Community Foundation. Uh, they then were responsible for overseeing the, the, the use of the funds, but all the funds went for the construction of the statue, uh, uh, the renovation of the fountain, the pedestal and bust up here at the high school. Um, we had some other signage that was done uh, around uh, the plaza site itself. Um, but, you know, one of our, our two, there are two components to our, our mission as a committee. One was to give appropriate recognition to uh, a native son but also educate the community on who um, Hayes was, what he did, um, and the accomplishments that he attained as governor, a member of Congress, and obviously President of the United States.
This is my second version of the Rutherford B. Hayes bust for the statue that we just installed this afternoon in downtown Delaware. Uh, it's the bust off of that statue. I had done version one and it was accepted by the committee and was actually in your school on display for a while, but it also was on display in my studio in Zanesville. And the more I looked at it, the more I saw about a hundred little things I could do better. So even though it was already approved, I thought I'm doing it again. So this is the second version and everyone that has seen it, including the principal here and the Hayes committee, the statue committee also decided that this was considerably better than the one they had already approved. This now is the one that is on the bronze bus that we installed, the seven foot one. And it's the one that I just traded out with your principal here and will be on display for many years to come because we just bolted it to your floor. So you're gonna play hell getting it off of there. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets went down, the bombs bursting in air, came through, through the night. That our flag was still there. It started out as a project, it really became a cause. And that's because everyone came together with this common goal. Friends and neighbors and co-workers and businesses and principals and students and teachers all came together to get us here to this point tonight. And that's what makes this so special. It's as much a celebration of our community as it is a celebration of our native son. And we saw that tonight, earlier, beginning with our the last song that we heard tonight. Uh, I don't know if the crowd here knows that, but that fanfare was composed by Judge Dave Himanowski. Dave, take <laughs> Dave is a judge in the probate juvenile division of Delaware County Court of Common Pleas. The piece was commissioned by the Hayes High School Band under the direction of Andrew Doherty. Dave, thanks very much. Also our national anthem again, the wonderful Hayes Singers in the Air Force ROTC, ROTC unit from all of Delaware County. They did an awesome job. Let's give them a hand, please. Another great thing about this project was, was we all got to learn new things about Rutherford B. Hayes. Like we all know that he was born right over there across the street between the unleaded gas pump and the Slim Jim aisle. We've learned some great quotations, a lot of great things about President Hayes. I think this is the most impressive. His inaugural address in 1877, Hayes said, he serves his party best who serves his country best. Think about that. But my favorite is a little known quote that Hayes said, make sure my 197th birthday is a real rager. <laughs> That's right, tonight, today is old Rudd's 197th birthday.
So, so let's say we get this party started. So on the stage with me tonight, it's my honor to uh, introduce our, our VIPs. First Mayor, Mayor Carolyn K. Riggle, Mayor of the City of Delaware. Delaware. Delaware County Commissioner Gary Merrill. Matt Eichmann, Greif Incorporated Vice President. And Steve Bunyard, Ohio Health, Grady Memorial Hospital President. His Excellency, Excellency Ambassador Manuel Caceres of Paraguay. But this ultimately is about, is a local product, a grassroots effort because of the hard work of a, of a heck of a local group, the Heritage Fund Committee. And I'd love, it is my honor to recognize them tonight. Uh, I'm going to call their names out and we'll save our applause for the end. Uh, Corey Beam, Sue Bennington, Susie Bibbler, Scott Blackwell, Jean Buckingham, Brent Carson, Mary Beth Graham, Adam Haynes, Frank Hickman, Jack Hilborn, Bill McCartney, Donna Meyer, Ted Miller, Carolyn K. Riegel, Deb Schatzer, Rick Stranges, Roger Van Sickle, Jackie Walker, Susan Wells, Lee Yoakum, and the man we saved for last, Bill Reitz, the chairperson. chance of succeeding and then Bill Reeds came in and he made it happen. Bill organized, he worked people, he begged, borrowed and steal. I think these chairs are from our council chamber as a matter of fact, Bill. Bill made it all work and it's my pleasure to introduce Bill Reeds, chairman of the Heritage Fund Committee. One hundred and ninety seven years ago today, a short distance from where we stand, a son, Rutherford Bertrand Hayes, was born to Rutherford and Sophia Hayes. Three months before his birth, his father had passed away from a fever. Rudd, as his mother called him, spent his youth growing up in the home his family built on the northeast corner of William and Franklin Street. At age 14, Rudd began an educational journey that would conclude with a law degree from Harvard University. Hayes practiced as a criminal defense attorney and donated his service, services representing fugitive slaves in Cincinnati. An honored disabled veteran of the Civil War, he served two terms in the U.S. House of Representatives, then three terms as governor of Ohio. He served as the 19th president of the United States from 1877 to 1881. Quite a resume for a native son of Delaware one of only 43 communities in the United States that can make this claim. Currently, there are two memorials to him. In 1925, a memorial to the birthplace of Rutherford at 17 East William Street was erected by the Delaware City Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. In 1966, the William Street United Methodist Church placed a ground marker signifying his boyhood's residence. Rutherford B. Hayes High School, the Hayes Government Center, Streets and housing development have been named after Rutherford. Gene Buckingham, a longtime Delaware resident, now lives in eastern Indiana, thought that, like others, that more needed to be done to recognize Hayes. He approached the city leaders and proposed that a statue be erected on this site. The city manager was a supporter and encouraged Gene to form a committee. He gathered a group and work began in 2016. The Rutherford B. Hayes Heritage Fund was established with the help of the Delaware Community Foundation. Corey Beam, a senior at Hayes High School at the time, chaired the committee until he began his college career. Buckingham assumed leadership. The committee raised funds for an artist's rendering of a memorial on a portion of this plaza. Last May, I challenged the committee to complete the mission to see Rutherford B. Hayes come home. 
today, October 4th, 2019, with a set goal date, or today, I'm sorry, that was our goal, today, October 4th. Woo. With a set goal date, the committee presented a new proposal for this site, selected Alan Cottrell as a statue sculptor, and launched a fundraising campaign. Tonight, we are proud to announce that thanks to individuals, service organizations, local schools, Ohio Wesleyan University, businesses and corporations in the greater Delaware community, along with the city of Delaware, we've achieved our goal. Besides the statue we will unveil tonight, the project also includes the following. A bust of Rutherford on a solid black pedestal in the atrium entrance at Rutherford B. Hayes High School. Also, local graphic artist and Hayes graduate Nick Harris highlighted the atrium with an education quote by Rutherford. The years of his presidency with the presidential seal and his name and lifespan above the pedestal for the bust. An update to the memorial site at Hayes' birthplace at 17 East Wave Street, which I can see from here. The upgraded fountain that stands behind the statue. And lastly, honorary street signs under the William Street signs signifying the blocks from Union to Washington Street, wherever will always be known as Rutherford B. Hayes Way. <laughs> the committee mission statement on our fundraising brochure states, a project to bring appropriate recognition to and educate the community about the 19th President of the United States and Delaware's native son, Rutherford B. Hayes. On behalf of the entire committee, I say thank you for the support this community-based project received. We will continue our task on the educational component in the years to come. I am confident this evening will culminate in an appropriate recognition, but long awaited for a native son who took his upbringing in the town of Delaware and did what he believed was best for Ohio, the United States of America, all citizens, and other nations. In closing, Delaware appreciates Rutherford Richard Hayes' dedication and service, and as Lee said, happy birthday, Rudd. At this time, I'd like you to join me, or won't you please join me, in singing happy birthday to Rudd. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronald. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. So, so you've all heard of uh, method acting where I... Uh, do it. You, you want to take this show on the road? Ready? So, you, so you've all heard about method acting where an actor and actress will take on the persona of the character that they're portraying in a movie or play. So as this rolled on and on, I kept thinking, who does Bill look like? Is there any similar? Look at this guy. Did a great job, Bill. Thank you, partner. So if you, uh, if you ever want to get a project done in the city of Delaware, get the mayor, get Mayor Regal, behind it. She will marshal the troops to make sure it's done. She loves her city, she loves her community, and she loves to be involved in any project she can. It's my honor to introduce the mayor of our city of Delaware, Mayor Carolyn K. Regal. Thank you, Lee. Welcome all. You just can't believe the crowd that's out there. It's unbelievable. Thank you. What a great night to be the mayor in the city of Delaware. On behalf of our city, I am honored to be here and welcome all of you to this historic event in our awesome downtown. Three years ago, our community com committee began planning a way to finally and fully recognize Delaware's native son and the 19th United States president. To get where we are tonight, it took a total team effort from this entire community in a way that would make President Hayes proud of his Delaware. I want to thank my fellow city council members who worked together to make this possible. Vice Mayor Kent Schaefer, George Hellinger, Chris Jones, Lisa Keller, Jim Browning, and Kyle Rohr. I want 
to also thank our fantastic city staff, but mostly I want to thank all of you. You did it. I am proud and honored to be the mayor of this city. Grife Incorporated, or Grife Brothers, as, as we all, some of us remember it, their history in our community is really a chapter unto itself. And with us tonight, from Grife, is Matt Eichmann, Vice President for Communication. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for having us this evening. It's a wonderful evening. It's a lovely night. As Lee mentioned, my name is Matt Eichmann. I lead Grice and Best Relations and Corporate Communications Functions. Thank you. <laughs> I should know that by now, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pleased to be with you this evening. You know, Grife has been a part of this community for a very long time. When we first heard about this opportunity in this project, we saw some very natural overlaps. What I mean by that is President Hayes was very proud to call Delaware his home. This community made a big impact on his life, and in much the same way, Grife is very proud to call it Delaware its home. Uh, and the community is, has been our center, has been a big role, and it's been an impact on our company as well, too. So on behalf of our 17,000 global colleagues around the world at Grife, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to partner with you uh, on the sculpture. We'd like to also commend and thank uh, Mr. Cottrell on his artwork. We think that it's uh, extremely befitting this community and uh, befitting our 19th, uh, our 19th president. So again, thank you very much. Hope you have a great uh, rest of your evening. Thank you, Matt. Successful communities are always blessed to have a great health care partner in our community and our city of Delaware is no different. We are so fortunate to have Grady and Ohio Health with us tonight. And on their behalf, please welcome Steve Bunyard, Ohio Health, Grady Memorial Hospital President. Thanks, Lee. On behalf of the associates, physicians, and volunteers that we have at Ohio Health Grady Memorial Hospital, it's a great pleasure to be here. It's uh, uh, an honor, and, and I look to Jack Hilborn particularly, who had the uh, had, had the uh, interest in coming and talking to me and asking us to support this project. So thank you for giving us that opportunity to do that. Thanks, Jack. Um, I've got a, I kind of got a about this. Um, the other day, so I happened to drive by here when the president was in the back of a pickup truck, <laughs> and it occurred to me that he had come roughly 80 miles, maybe, is that is that right, Mr. Cottrell, from uh, Zanesville, so I, I immediately started thinking about, back in his era, 197 years ago, he would have been moving around with a horse and carriage, most likely, or his family would have been, so I did a little research, in case you're wondering, the horse and carriage could make it about 50 miles in 8 to 12 hours, depending on how fast the carriage moved, I guess, and how healthy the horses were, possibly. So I'm thinking about how he would be looking at this today and thinking how different the world has changed in the last 197 years. But with that said, it is truly an honor um, to be here in your community and an even a bigger honor to be here tonight for the Rutherford B. Hayes Comes Home Celebration. So thank you very much. Less well known about the Hayes presidency, but much more important was his work with the country of Paraguay. In fact, he is held in such high regard in Paraguay that a delegation is here tonight to celebrate this big event with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excellency, Ambassador of Paraguay, Manuel Caceres. Good evening. It's an honor being here with you to celebrate this uh, great day on behalf of the people and the government of Paraguay. Uh, we are here to share this joy with you. And I just want to tell you why I'm here. Well known what he did as president here, but the impact he had abroad, especially in my country. Uh, more than 150 years ago, we had a terrible war over there. Paraguay was uh, defeated, we lost a lot of land, uh, the population was decimated, and uh, there were land issues after the war. So he was submitted to arbitration to the United States government in 1878, President Hayes. Uh, we call it over there, Presidente Ages, I don't age, um, was uh, the president here and uh, he awarded a piece of land which is about 
45,000 square miles. It's about the size of the state of Ohio to Paraguay. And because of that, we were able to keep about two thirds of the country. And he's a hero over there. Uh, we have schools, we have hospitals, we have cities, we have uh, states, counties, uh, soccer teams, you name it, we got it. And uh, we just love him over there. And that's the reason I'm here. I'm, I'm honored, humbled, and uh, just very happy to be part of this great celebration. Congratulations, Mayor, and all of the people of Delaware for this uh, great day and this uh, proper place for the president to be remembered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. Of course, uh, along with being President of the United States, a Civil War General, Rutherford B. Hayes was Governor of Ohio, and uh, with us tonight, um, I'd like to recognize the Governor's Liaison, Kathleen Young is here tonight. Hi, Kathleen, thank you very much. One of the one of the awesome things is once we get this unveiled, that now Delaware will be on uh, the Ohio Presidential Trail. It will be an official stop on the Presidential Trail, something we've never had before. Another great boost for our downtown, and we can't wait. I talked earlier about how the schools and the students came together on this project. One of the neatest things was a thing called Pennies for the President, where, where school children in all of our city schools, St. Mary's, Delaware Christian, all gave a penny or a penny or a nickel. All told, they raised more than $1,100 to help support the, the making of this statue. It's a wonderful, wonderful project and a real legacy to the kids. In addition, each and every one of the Hayes High School students signed a scroll. I don't know if you saw this in the newspaper today. That scroll was inserted into the statue yesterday before it was placed on a marble pedestal. It will live there forever. And so will the names and the signatures of all those Hayes students that signed it. So speaking of Hayes students, we are at that moment. And we thought, what more fitting than to have Hayes students unveil our statue tonight. With us from Hayes High School, Gianni Cordy, Amaya Rojas, and Liz Ida. Also with us tonight, the great, great, great granddaughter of Rutherford B. Hayes, Jen McFarland. As we listen to the fanfare one more time from Judge Haman Hamanowski, fanfare for 19th president, then we bring Bill Reeds back up. Did you think you'd get to this moment, Bill? Oh, Lee, I knew it was happening. October 5th, I stood here in the same plaza. That was the first Friday of October 2018. And I told anybody that was listening, October 4th, be here, because there's gonna be a statue on the corner. I don't lie. It is with great pleasure on behalf of the entire committee and the community of Delaware that I can announce Rutherford B. Hayes comes home! Thank you. 